Just like how Beardo wasn't planning on covering the Year of the Varg up until he saw a crap ton of comments asking him to do just that. Here we sit today with even more comments on an even older update. And while the Year of the Gobbler here is five years old and could possibly be the smallest update Don't Starve Together has ever seen in its history, there are still some really good tidbits of information to take from it. So much so in fact that I might actually be inclined to leave the Year of the Gobbler on at all times. And heck, let us remember that recent updates make it to where we can have every single Don't Starve Together event on at one time. Therefore, if someone turns these on and goes looking for information that they can't find, that's not good. Hence, this video. Now let's begin by discussing something that honestly doesn't really have all that much to do with the actual Year of the Gobbler Shrine itself, and it's about gobblers themselves. Normally, we get gobblers 10% of the time when picking a berry bush. In this event, that's 30% of the time, everybody. Oh yes, that's a really big and potentially strategic gameplay change. And we can just turn it on whenever we want now. That's the point I'm making. If you turn on the Year of the Gobbler, your gobbler farms are gonna be off the charts good. But again, even with the event being small, it kind of just gets better, everybody. Because if we can spawn gobblers that often, what if there was a way to make it to where we don't have to spend anything on any baits? Well, I shouldn't say anything. We will have to spend four gold and two boards for a gobbler shrine here. And in order to activate it like all the other shrines of the year of events, we'll have to give it a berry bush of some description. But say you do all that, something interesting begins to happen, everyone. Any gobblers nearby will be attracted to a shrine, but not only that, they will be passive. That means they're not going to run away from us if we happen to be running right up to their faces, but also notice how they're not going after any other of our berry bushes. Oh yes, this is pretty interesting, but it does have a limit. Because here's what you might be thinking. Oh, does this mean we literally don't have to make a bait pen at all? No, not exactly. Whoops, because if you hit one, then yeah, they go back to being the skittish gobblers that they're supposed to be, and they don't really revert back. And shrines do not keep them out come dusk either. They will find other bushes to return home to. Yeah, it's somewhat unfortunate. I feel like we can have some more fun with this shrine here because gobblers don't get much action in this game, do they? But let's remember, this was Clay's first ever year of events. But how did the event actually work, you ask? More specifically, how did we get red pouches throughout the events? Well, by having gobblers eat berries off the ground, as you can see. But also note, they can only drop one red pouch per one berry per one day. Meaning we can't really go crazy with farming lucky gold nuggets like how we can in some other year of events. But of course, as with every year of events, there are offerings. And this year brought the lucky fan. Something that, honestly, is pretty flippin' amazing. Now, we don't exactly equip them like a luxury fan or a weather pane, folks, but a lucky fan is essentially two in one. Pay attention to my temperature throughout this, as when I use this, I not only cool myself down, I put out fires and indeed spawn in whirlwinds, everybody. It's not much though, and once you do it twice, you can't really do it a third time. You only get two whirlwind uses, and then the final use is just cool down and put out fires. That's it. But at the end of the day though, let's remember how cheap this thing is. Just a few lucky gold nuggets, and if we have other year of events on, we can get lucky gold nuggets way easier than some, I don't know, boss loot, down feathers, if you know what I mean, bolt goat horns, gears for weather panes. It's kind of interesting. It's a cheaper luxury van weather pane counterparts. And before we just fire through the usuals, let us reminisce a little bit and recall how the year of the gobbler 
added giblet, everybody. One of the many critters we can get from the rock den. But yes, before we truly wrap, let's just once again fire through some of these things while also adding a couple little tidbits of information that I didn't go into in our Year of the Var guide. For you see, firecrackers are indeed just firecrackers if you want to have some fun with them, but they have a use. They will panic hounds if you happen to have firecrackers when hounds are nearby. All the lucky bee's body, tail, and head everybody will give us a pretty Pretty darn decent sanity regeneration effect if we happen to be dancing with them on and if you have more people in the game wearing more of these beast body parts doing this dance with you that actually increases to like a plus 20 sanity per minute gain that's not bad not bad at all. Oh, and make note that a sewing kit will give back 100% durability. Why did Beer not talk about any of this in the Year of the Varg update, or honestly, any Year of updates? Well, let's be honest, it's because I don't often play with other people. But finally, we of course have the Red Lantern, which honestly might be one of the best lanterns and light givers in this entire game. I mean, it gives you 12 days of use. Yeah, yeah, we can't actually refuel it, but it's very cheap. And lastly, the floating lanterns, everybody, which are honestly just really cool looking. I mean, if you're making a base on the water or near the water and you have some of these going, I mean, that's really cool. Oh, and even though it really doesn't matter at all in the grand scheme of things, I mentioned the skins that came out with the Year of the Varg, so I should probably mention the skins that came out with the Year of the Gobbler, and there was but one. The clucky winter hat here. But with that, there you have it, everyone. That was the entirety of the Year of the Gobbler event, with just some extra stuff thrown into it, because let's face it, this video would have been done in 40 seconds if we were simply talking the Year of the Gobbler update contents. But hey, for their first ever Year of event, in a time where this game was honestly in its infancy, We'll take it. Turn on some other Year of Events alongside the Year of the Gobbler, and you can not only have some great strategic fun with that lucky fan, I'm guessing the Gobbler Shrine and the Gobbler Spawn Rates are going to be quite useful. Thanks again to all those who've been asking me to cover this event for years once again. And I hope all who see this here today will kind of gain an appreciation for turning on these events to kind of spice up your worlds. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wished to all. Gobble, gobble. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.